Today we're going to talk about two anti-epileptics, um, Dilantin and Keppra. Let's take a look at a few terms. So the definition of seizure is an abnormal, sudden, excessive, uncontrolled electrical discharge of neurons within the brain, and that can cause a change in level of consciousness, motor, or sensory ability, or behavior. Now, epilepsy is defined by the National Institute of Neurological Disorder and Stroke as two or more seizures experienced by a person. That can be caused by an abnormality in electrical neuronal activity or an imbalance of neurotransmitters, or both. So let's take a look at how a seizure occurs. And pay attention right here. This is going to be a sodium channel, and this is sodium, and this is the sodium coming here to a receptor. Okay, so action potentials within the neuron are initiated by an influx of sodium, okay? And sodium goes into the cell through a sodium channel in the cell membrane. Now, for sodium to enter the cell membrane, the channels have to be open and in an active state. I repeat, active state. Action potential follows and the neuron fires. Now, as soon as sodium enters, those channels close and they return to an inactive state, so not active state. Now, when the channel is inactive, sodium cannot enter the cell and therefore the channels cannot be activated and there's no action potential or neuron firing. So let's take a look at your seizures and your types of seizures real quick. So seizures can be divided into partial and generalized. Your partial affect only one hemisphere, and your generalized affect both, and there's a loss of consciousness with these. Now, your partial can be broken up even more into simple and complex. Your simple, your consciousness is not impaired, and your complex, your consciousness is. Your generalized are further broken down into tonic-clonic, which is sustained muscle contraction and the rhythmic muscle contraction. You have your absent or absan, which is just a brief loss of consciousness, less than 10 seconds. And you have your atonic, which is a sudden loss of muscle tone. You have your myoclonic, which is um, clonic contractions or jerks lasting 3 to 10 seconds. You have your status epilepticus, which is a medical emergency. And these are when a seizure follows right after another without recovery or coming back to baseline and it lasts longer than five minutes. And then you have your febrile, which tends to happen in your children's, and that's just a generalized seizure caused by high temperatures. So let's take a look at dilatin. So remember that sodium influx is what produces an action potential, and that then causes the neuron to fire. Now what dilantin is going to do, it's going to control seizures by decreasing the sodium influx into the cell. So let's take a look at the pharmacotherapeutics. So dilantin can use to control seizures. It's also used to prevent <clears throat> and treat seizures that occur during or after neurosurgery. It's also used as a antidysrhythmic, specifically when the dysrhythmia is caused by digoxin. It's also used as an alternate to magnesium to treat moms with preeclampsia, and it's used to treat trigeminal neuralgia. Now be careful with your patients that have low albumin or, high, or are taking a high protein bound drug because dilatin is highly protein bound. Let's take a look at pharmacodynamics. So now dilatin acts on the motor cortex. So dilatin reversibly binds to the sodium channel. This delays the return of that channel to an active state. And remember, the channel has to be open and active for sodium to be able to cross the cell membrane into the cell. Now the time between the action potential is now lengthened. And so the neurons cannot fire at an excessive rate and excessive muscle contractions are prevented. Now, now PL Dilantin includes an onset within 30 minutes to two hours, a peak concentration of 1.5 to three hours, and a steady and a steady state serum concentration in seven to ten days. The duration action is dependent on a half-life that can go up to 45 hours. 
PL dilatin is usually given as a sustained release capsule and the peak of that is 4 to 12 hours. Now the IV infusion needs to be administered directly into a large vein via central line or a pick line. <clears throat> the drug can be diluted with saline but don't dilute with dextrose because that causes precipitation so be careful with that. Um, the manufacturer actually recommends that you give dilatin via a wide tube or a three-way stopcock rather than a continuous IV infusion to avoid precipitation. Also remember to give it slow, don't give it rapid because you can cause hypotension or cardiac dysrhythmias, especially with your older and debilitated clients. Now remember to always flush before and after each dose. And there's no IM injection for dilatin because the absorption is erratic and it causes damage to the skin. So let's look at pharmacokinetics. So dilatin is slowly absorbed from the small intestine. It is highly protein bound, that being 85 to 95 percent of the drug. There's a decrease if there's a decrease in serum protein or albumin, that means there's going to be an increase of free dilatin serum level. Now, with a small to average drug dose, the half-life of dilatin is approximately 22 hours, but that can range anywhere from 6 to 45 hours. Um, dilatin is metabolized in an active metabolite, and those portions are excreted in the urine. Now, there are some contraindications. If you have a hypersensitivity to the hydantoins, which is what dilatin is, if you have a heart block because you have the possibility of causing bradycardia, if you have any psychiatric disorders because dilantin does cause depression, and if you are pregnant because dilantin does cause teratogenic effects to the fetus, and if once pregnant and breastfeeding, dilantin is actually excreted in the breast milk and actually will inhibit the vitamin K in your baby. So you got to do lots of education about that. There's many adverse effects and you have to be cautious and precautious with all these. So the most common are your leukopenia, hepatitis, depression, the gingivitis. Hyperglycemia does occur, especially in your diabetics, because it inhibits insulin. And there has been related cases of osteoporosis and osteomalacia with that Now the most dangerous are the thrombocytopenia, the granulocytosis, and the Steven Johnson syndrome. So just always keep an eye out when you're giving your deadline and think of these things. Now, um, there are many drug interactions because they're highly protein bound. <clears throat> they compete with other drugs for the plasma protein binding sites. Now, for example, dilantin displays as anticoagulants and aspirin causing more free drug availability and increasing their activity. One thing I do want to mention is that certain antipsychotics and herbs can lower the seizure threshold and can increase seizure activity. So just keep that in mind. So um, you have increased effects of dilatin when you give it with simetine, isothionate, and there's a decrease effect when given with folic acid, calcium, sucrophate, and tube feedings. Certain labs are affected. And there's a decrease in anticoagulants, PO contraceptives, antihistamines when you give dilatin. And there's increased absorption of folic acid and calcium and vitamin D. Now your patient care. So when you have your patient, you're going to make sure you get a health history that includes the current drugs and herbs they use so you can catch any interactions. You're going to assess the client's knowledge about how much they know about the drug. You're going to check their urine output because remember it's excreted by the kidneys. You're going to check any renal and liver functions because it's metabolized and excreted by the liver and the kidneys respectively. You're going to monitor your serum levels because remember you want it between that 10 to 20 micrograms. And if you give it IV, you're going to make sure that you give it slowly so you don't cause hypotension and cardiac dysrhythmias. You're going to try to promote compliance. You're going to make sure to explain that they need to take it every day at the same time. You're going to monitor the CBC to detect any early blood dyscrasias. And you are going to put seizure precautions in place just in case a seizure were to occur. Um, you're going to assess your nutrition status because dilatin does cause anorexia, nausea, and vomiting. 
and you're going to assess your female patients of brown bearing age to see if there's a possibility of them being pregnant. Now your patient teachings, you're going to teach them to ch shake the suspension before they mix the medication. You're going to advise the client to not drive or perform heavy machinery. You're going to instruct your female clients of varying age to talk to the healthcare providers about Dilantin and maybe another form of contraceptives. You're going to monitor your serum levels, make sure it's between that 10 to 20. You're going to tell your clients to avoid any other CNS depressants like alcohol. You're going to tell them that certain herbs can interact with Dilantin. You're going to encourage them to have a medical alert identification card or bracelet or tag that tells them their diagnosis and the drug they're on. You're going to emphasize that they cannot abruptly stop the therapy. And you're going to tell them that they need to have regular dental checkups because of that gingivitis that does occur. They need good oral hygiene as well. You're going to warn the client about um, some of the side effects, you're going to check their labs, you're going to teach the client not to self-medicate with over-the-counter drugs without first talking to the healthcare providers. And if they are diabetic, you're going to teach them to watch their blood sugars because remember it does block insulin and that does spike up their blood sugars. So let's talk a little bit of Keppra. It's very similar to Dilantin but it only has a few little things that are quite different. Um, so it's an adjunct anti-epileptic. It treats partial onset seizures and generalized seizures. It's as effective as Dilantin. It has less adverse effects, and it's the better option for long-term therapy. Its mechanism of action is actually unknown, but there's no interaction, and it's a pregnancy category C. Now, Keppra is rapidly absorbed. Its bioavailability is 100%. There's no extensive metabolism, and metabolites forms are not active. It is not metabolized by the, four, the, by the P450 enzymes, and it's eliminated by the body, primarily by the kidneys. Let's see a few questions real quick. So, a mother and twin should breastfeed her baby? Yes, true or false? False, because remember it is excreted through the breast milk and I have it vitamin K in the baby. So no breastfeeding. So Dilantin controls seizures by decreasing an influx of which electrolyte into the cell? Sodium. Remember it blocks those gates and it makes them stay shut. Dilatin has been prescribed for a client with seizures. The nurse should include which appropriate nursing interventions in the plan of care. Definitely report in an abnormal level and definitely monitor CBC for, it, for any early detection of blood dyscrasias. And here are my references.